We're here with Matt Nathanson. Thanks so much for taking the time, man. Really appreciate it. Thanks for hanging out. Um, you, you've kind of, in the last couple of years, I mean, you've been at this for a while, but the last couple of years have been huge for you. Yeah. In terms of getting the bills paid, right? Yeah, yeah, it's been great. Um, people don't know um, much, if people don't know much about you, you're a singer-songwriter based in San Francisco, originally from the East Coast, but you're based in San Francisco. You've been at this for like 18 years. Yeah. And, and the last record, I guess, was really the breakthrough for you, right? Yeah, so there was, I put out about six or seven records before and was kind of building the fan base on a real grassroots level. So it yeah. was like, it was getting bigger and bigger and everything was great, but I never had radio exposure, I never had TV exposure, any of that kind of stuff. Right. And so then I was on a label for one record, and then I was like, I gotta get out of here. And I got off and made this record by myself, the last record. Right. And then licensed it to Vanguard and Capital, and then all of a sudden it became a hit, and people were buying it. And all of a sudden there was this like nice feeling of validation. Everyone's always kind of like, was it was it weird going in to make my new record, Modern Love? They were like, was it weird going in to make Modern Love after the success of Come On Get Higher? Yeah. And I was like, no, it was the best. Yeah, yeah. It was the first time I got to go in and make a record and actually feel confident about myself. <laughs> uh, and let's talk about it. I mean, you sold like 300,000 records, Come On Get Higher's like 1.8 million downloads on iTunes, like just insane yeah, numbers, yeah, right? Yeah, it's neat. Um, but more than that, more than the downloads and, and more than, you know, and, and those pay the bills, but tons of TV shows were using your music, right? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And that's kind of the recipe for success these days. It's not just about selling records now. It's about getting played on all these great TV shows. Yeah. How, what's the difference for you in terms of watching a TV show and seeing your song get played versus hearing your song on the radio? It's pretty fun to when somebody marries your song with another storyline. Right. Like, it's a pretty fun deal because yeah. it's like it adds a depth to the song. Right. Because it's someone else's interpretation of, of it. Of the song, right. Yeah, so you get this nice visual sort of and this, di and this dialogue thread going underneath. And it, I dig it a lot, man. It's fun. It's it's like the first time it ever happened. There was that show Dawson's Creek way back right. in the day, yeah. and I happened to be a huge fan of Dawson's Creek because I think I'm like a 13 year old girl, <laughs> trapped in the body of an adult man. Right. And uh, and I and I like watched it and this to watch characters that you've been following, right. like all of a sudden your song starts playing and you're in the scene, sort of like supporting this experience. That's pretty rad. That was one of those cool moments. What's it like to to be a, a guy who plays rock music for the most part, and, and you know, charting alongside Katy Perry, Britney Spears, and you know, yeah. on the Hot AC charts? That that must be a real trip for you, right? Yeah, it's a trip because that stuff happened while I was in the middle of, you know, the the landscape of music, music, the landscape of entertainment, right, shifted, like from 2007 when some Mad Hope with Come On Get Higher came out, yeah, till now with the new record. So it was like all of a sudden stations have sort of started leaning towards like this mm -ts, mm -ts, you know more yeah, of that yeah. kind of stuff and like glitter cannons and stuff have sort of like started to overshadow yeah yeah the, like people like me I'm like hey yeah. and so but so it's fun it's 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 weird it's weird to hear my song in between like a Kesha song and the way that it is now it's like there's two writers right like that write all the songs that right. get on all this so it's fun to be in the to, Ryan Tedder from One Republic has like 30 songs in the top whatever yeah and like there's me you know it's cool um, and, and what is it for you? I mean, is, is this, does it come down to songwriting for you? I mean, at, at the end of the day, do you want to be known as a, as a songwriter or as a singer, or does it really matter? I guess for me, it's like uh, music is the only thing that I care about, honestly, like yeah. in the world. And so when people say, you know, what other things do you do? It's like, I buy records. Well, what else do you do? Well, I listen to records. Well, what else do you do? <laughs> I watch. It's like, it's my passion. It's the only right. thing I've ever committed to in my life. And so for me, I guess, it's just the artist the aspect of being an artist, you know? A lot of times people, sort of because I have a, because I play acoustic guitar and I have ma a male anatomy, they're like, oh, he's a male singer songwriter, you know right, what I mean? Right, like, right. And, but I, I kind of, that's what this new record, I wanted to kind of get away from the idea of the singer songwriter guy. Because in the 80s, bands like Tears for Fears and Robert Smith is essentially a songwriter sure. in The Cure and like, and Roland Orzabal is a songwriter and all these people are songwriters, but couched in the production of those records, right. it sounds like this experience. Yeah. And for me, that was the inspiration for this record. Was like, all right, how do we start kind of unhooking from this idea that it has to be me and the acoustic guitar? Do you think though that that uh, we're gonna get sick of uh, uh, beats and stuff, and that we're we're gonna come back to songwriting and, and melodies and yeah. real musicianship? Yeah, if everything is cyclical. Yeah, and I'm already sick of it, so I feel <laughs> yeah. like I might be. But so it's one of those things where I feel like 
as cycles go, the Adele record, the Mumford and Sons record, all these yeah. things are like beginning to pop up. Yeah. We just used to have a much more balanced like situation where yeah. you could get your in syncs with your Pearl Jam, with right, your, right. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so now uh, we're just a little bit out of balance. Yeah. And so there's always it has to swing back. Do you think that you know the the uh, and we're talking about this on 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 the day after Steve Jobs passed away, uh -huh. but a lot of it probably has to do with you know people having their iPod and filling their iPod with their collection and their friends' collection and their mother's collection and having all of that music and all that different music in one in one spot, yeah. right? So that's why. It, there's so much genre bending going on. Well, and that's what's so amazing is that people, if you look at a kid's iPod, that like, J, like or my iPod, another 13-year-old th girl's iPod, yeah. it's like I have Jay-Z next to Taylor Swift, next to Slayer, next to, you know what I mean? Like this is just extreme, how it works. And you were listening and to extreme. extreme. Yeah. I can get my hair metal on with yeah, the yeah. best of them. And so, uh, and so it's amazing to me that radio is so, you listen to radio and it's just playing one type of thing. Yeah. Because most people don't just listen to one type of right. thing. So it's a strange, it, we're at a tipping point. It's kind of exciting and it's kind of sort of scary. Yeah. But it's it's going to be fun to see where it all ends up. I, I guess the good news for a musician though is if you write good music that people engage with and, and find a common ground with, then you'll have a place in a genreless society or in a, in a genre specific world, right? It, it, music is like, is God to me, right? Yeah. It's religion. So it's like you don't mess with music. If it's like you don't cheat music right. out of itself. And so if you go to write a song, you just don't you, you don't just give it a half-ass experience because music deserves more. You're right. in a league where Blonde on Blonde exists or where Octung Baby exists or where Thriller exists. And so if you're not giving 100% of of yourself to the to the art you're doing a disservice to the art. And I'm and it's not art like I believe in art and commerce coming together to make something great. Right. But I feel like we live in a society where mediocrity is championed right. and like human beings are uh, sort of pushed to ex to like to just hit the middle of their potential. Right. And it's like we worship things like the Kardashians and all this stuff. Literally worship like people yeah, yeah. people that that's their what they want to be yeah. when they get older. Yeah, where it's like, when I, yeah, yeah, they want to be snooky. They want to yeah, be yeah. able to get drunk and kind of have fun and like be famous. Like fame is such a strange, it's it's such it's the thing now that's become w more important than anything. And so as a society, I just think human beings are worth more than that. And I think that music is worth way more. Well, clearly having a, a career of over 18 years and only hitting it, hitting the jackpot or whatever yeah, the yeah, jackpot yeah. is, 17 years, 16 years in, you clearly have lived that way, yeah, right? Because like, yeah, that's what you. It's like passion, man. It's like passion for what you do. Yeah. I like to joke that I took the stairs in my career. Right. That I've got a nicer ass than most people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Modern Love is out since really. June. Faster is climbing up the charts. I mean, it's a slow build, right? For yeah, all yeah. these things. It's still been. It's still been good, though. I mean, mm, overall. Yeah, super good. I mean, like. We just got off tour with Maroon 5 and Train. That was a blast. We was on tour with Sugarland earlier this year, wow. the country band. Yeah. And then now headlining, and the, these shows have been going great. And lots of good TV, Conan, and gonna do Howard Stern, and they're great, just great <laughs> He'll ask stuff. you about that 13-year-old girl gonna, in your- He's gonna ask me about a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I gotta figure out. I think out. Gaga was on, and she talked about um, her privates and stuff. She put, talked about her Situation. Vajaja, yeah. How did I miss that? Yeah. Does she bedazzle it? <laughs> no, I don't think she mentioned bedazzling it, but apparently she, the, her inner voice is that thing. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that is awesome. <laughs> I'd like to listen to her well, inner you should, voice. <laughs> well, a lot. When you're in New York, she's you should look so her up. She's so She's just she's weird. She's weird and awesome. Yeah. No? Okay. Um, Good luck, man, with the record. It's, oh, I, I thought you meant good luck when you're in New York no, finding man. Lady Gaga. Yeah, yeah. Scaling that. No, well, good luck with Stern. Yeah, it's that be won't, fun. won't be as easy as sitting here on a purple couch. Yeah, and this uh, is a very sexy. This looks yeah. like someone skinned Barney. You know what's amazing? <laughs> this is it's a new building, and we we've been here for a year, and all the furniture looks really good. But I'm sure you'll get up, and you won't be as you'll say, man, that couch sucked. It's not that. No, comfortable. it's very comfortable. I like really? it. Really? Oh yeah. Well, let's just keep them here for another half hour. Um, thanks so much, man, for taking the time. Dude, thanks and for hanging out. Continued success, and, and we'll see you real soon. Right on. Cheers. Man. Cool.